Hello everyone, my name is Tedious and today I want to introduce you to my Zaya only Iron Man called Landmass. I made this account back in November 2017 and I played it for a few months until February when I took a long break on it and I started it back up uh, last October. So nowadays the, the Zaya only playstyle has become pretty popular with the Kebos Lowlands release coming up. So I decided to start creating videos on this account leading up to that update because it's pretty much the main focus for me right now on old school runescape so I figured I might as well start making some progress updates on this. When I made this account I was inspired by Zaya Products, Sherlockness and Evan Andrew H who were playing Zaya only Iron Man back then and I figured I wanted to give it a go myself as well. Because this is my main focus right now, I might be taking a break on the Mage Only Iron Man, as the one year membership that I got from King of the Skill just ran out today, and I'm only really playing the account occasionally to do a few raids on it, and it also ties up another account to use as a food alt, so I don't really want to invest more membership onto two accounts just to do a few raids here and there, so I'll probably just be playing this account for a while now, and see where it goes. That's pretty much why I wanted to start making videos on this account as well. Now originally this uh, used to be a level 3 skiller because the other so yeah, only Iron Man we were playing back then were normal accounts and I wanted to focus more on just skilling. The rules of this account would be pretty simple. Uh, basically I started out by going to Zaya and then I pretty much just gathered all the meat for Druidic Ritual on Zaya and then leave the island to do the quest and bring a Pestle of Mortar. But I forgot the Pestle of Mortar, so I'll eventually get one, but it's only really needed to crush Bird Nest, so I don't need it just yet. And then a second exception would be to be able to get skill capes whenever I get a 99, just because, I mean, I like skill capes, they look good on the bank, they are pretty good fashion scape, and I think when you get a 99 on a restricted Iron Man like this, you might as well go get the cape to recognize the accomplishment. Now, at the start, as I was a level 3 skiller, the only way to train agility from level 1 would be to use Toy Mice. This was about 4000 XP per hour, I believe, and it was very high intensity. So, I did this to like mid 40s, and I decided that I wanted to get combat up eventually, anyways, because I wanted to have some viable late game goals. So, because other Zaya only Iron Man at the time also got a Barbarian Fishing Rod to help them get 60 agility, I decided to do this as well. So another exception I made was to make a one-off trip to the Barbarian Assault area. Um, I did this by making a games necklace so I could just teleport there and teleport back quickly with the minigame teleport. And I got a Barbarian Fishing Rod as well, so with that I was able to get 60 agility pretty easily which was required to use the shortcut at Wintertot, which would be used to get 99 agility afterwards. Now the final exception which I made was to do the Eagle's Peak quest up until the point that you can use box traps. In the past, box traps were already available to all Zaya only Iron Man, but they made the bot prevention update which made it a requirement to unlock the box traps during Eagle's Peak in order to use them. So I pretty much just re-unlocked the box traps because the update was simply made for bot prevention and box traps were available on Zaya and the training method is also available on Zaya. So I figured I might as well just go and re-unlock them. This was also before any information was released about the aerial fishing method on Cable's Lowlands, which will most likely be used for a lot of Hunter XP as well. But I will still probably spend some time hunting Chinchompas so I can train range and also maybe go for the Chinchompa pet. Okay, so let's just sort of paint a picture of what I've done up until this point on the account. After the first week of playing, my stats look like this. And as you can tell, my main focus was to get started with Wintertot. And other than that, there's nothing too special done so far. One thing worth mentioning is that I used the lamps from the Client of Current quest on Hunter, so that I could start catching the orange birds at level 9. This was however a mistake, as it's possible to catch bats in raids with just level 1 Hunter, so I should have used these lamps on Slayer. This set me back quite a bit on the Slayer lamping process. I continued grinding Wintertot until 99 fire making, and I think it's safe to say I got quite lucky on the unique rewards. At just 410 kill count, I had gotten 2 full Pyromancer sets, 3 tomes of fire, 3 pairs of gloves, 3 torches, and a dragon axe. I would then later on also get my first phoenix pet before hitting level 99. 
It was after 99 fire making that I decided to no longer stay 3 combat, so I got myself a barbarian fishing rod and trained my agility up to 60 for the winter tot shortcut, which would end up being the best way of training agility up to 99. I also did some other skilling on the side, including fishing around 30k lobsters. When I returned to the account last October, my stats would look like this. So you can tell I made some general progression, including some more winter tot post 99. Now if you look at my current stats, I've gained 160 total levels since I made the return to this account. I'm also currently over 89 million fire making experience. And I'll quickly go over the different training methods for most of the high level stats I have right now. So agility was done post 60 from hopping over the pillars at winter tot in between kills. And this is about 5k XP per hour. The thieving is mostly from master farmers and at level 75 this unlocked the gem stall training method for me which I will probably use later on. For herb lore and farming all the seeds and the herbs pretty much came from winter tot and master farmers. For fishing and cooking I fished around 30k lobsters and 8k sharks to get a big shark and a little bit of harpoon and big net fishing for the other big fish and then of course the barbarian fishing for 60 agility. I then cooked all the fish I caught plus the raw fish I got from winter tot. Crafting is pretty much done by cutting gems and making jewelry and also silver tiaras. Um, this is done with the uncut gems, the silver and gold ore from winter tot. I've also strung quite a bit of flex to make bowstrings in order to make you and magic longbows which I would end up selling to the general store for some money. Woodcutting and fletching is of course the majority from winter tot with also a bit of fletching from the logs I got from winter tot. Runecrafting is something I just finished recently, like I got 77 just yesterday. And this is all done with the Arceus library. So just collecting the books and turning them in for XP reward. So now I'm finally ready to continue to craft blood runes on the account, which will be a lot nicer. Construction is pretty much a combination of repairing the braziers at Wintertot and also making planks from the oak, teak and mahogany locks I got from Wintertot. All the money used for this is pretty much also gained from Wintertot. Hunter was, like I said, lamped to 9 from the Client of Corrent quest reward. And then I did the Orange Birds up until level 53, which unlocked the normal Chinchompas, which I did until 73. So far I haven't caught any more Chinchompas after I did the Eagle Speed quest. But I will probably train until 80 Hunter with Aerial Fishing. And then I can use 5 box traps to catch more Chinchompas. And then we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, that's all the stats covered, so let's take a quick look at what the bank has to offer right now. It's currently sitting at a total value of around 135 mil according to Runelight, with approximately 2 mil in pure cash. In this main tab I'm keeping all of my runes, which includes 1000 Chaos runes and about 300 Dead runes which I, which I got from the Maze Random event, and also all of the pure essence from Winter Tot so far, and as you can tell it's not really that many considering all of the XP I've got so far. These are also all the orange feathers I kept when I trained 53 hunter with orange birds and all of the chinchompas I've caught so far. Apart from that there's nothing really worth mentioning in this tab, just some random equipment I got including some items from Implings. So let's go to the first tab, which is the farming tab. In here I collect all of the seeds I've gathered so far from Master Farmers and Winter Tot as well. And as you can see there's a few big stacks worth mentioning. First off are the Renner seeds, which I got about 350 from so far. And these are worth 15 mil on their own, so that's pretty massive. Then there's some other general herb seeds. Also 160 Snapdragon seeds and 175 Torstal seeds. Another big stack are the 200 U seeds. So I can't wait for the Cables release, which will allow me to plant all of these tree seeds over time. I've also got some berry seeds from the master farmers, which will be useful, mainly the white berry seeds, because those will be needed as a secondary in ingredient for super defense potions. I've also got a few cactus seeds, which, which I'll be able to plant, and some more trivial seeds that I don't have any use for right now, but, but maybe they'll be useful in the future when they release more patches to Zaya, we'll see. Then there's the crafting tab. Currently not really any gems because I always use them as I can, only diamonds are left because I'm not 70 crafting yet and I want to use them to make uh, diamond amulets because they give the best XP. I've also got my silver ore and silver bars and gold ores and gold bars in this tab because they're also used for crafting XP. And then there's some jewelry left 
The sapphire rings will become rings of recoil in the future, which I will most likely use to kill iron dragons, but that's still a while to go, so they won't be used right now. The unstrung amulets are still something I need to sell to the general store, and the ruby rings will be used as rings of forging to make iron bars. If we go to the mining and smithing tab, you can see I already have a few rings of forging which should last me quite a while for the iron ore I get from Winter Tot. I've got quite a bit of mitral ore and adamant ore left from Winter Tot as well, but I don't have enough coal yet for them, so they'll be sitting in the bank for a while until I get more coal. From all the iron bars I make, I'm currently turning them into iron arrow tips because after 200 mil fire making I plan to start training my combat up. And I will most likely start off with range and I'll need a lot of iron arrows for this. I'll probably end up making about 500,000 iron arrows. So right now whenever I have iron bars I turn them into iron arrow tips. Mitral bars go into mitral bolts and adamant bars will eventually most likely turn into adamant bolts as well. To make ruby and diamond bolts. Then there's the woodcutting slash construction slash fletching tab. Right now there's not really anything in here apart from the dragon axe I've shown earlier and also my energy potions. I basically use up all of the resources I, I get whenever I have them. So this tab is usually pretty empty. Um, the energy potions are in here because the only method I'm currently using energy potions for is training construction. Running back and forth from the beach area over here to the player owned house portal just north of here. So that's where they're in this tab. Then there's the fishing tab. Like I said, I use up all my resources, so there's no raw fish in here right now. And a lot of cooked fish, including around 29k lobsters, which I mostly fished myself, but they also come from winter top rewards as well. And about 10,000 sharks, which are also fished for the majority. Then in this tab, I'm keeping all of the winter tot uniques and also the stuff I need to make dynamite and the dynamite itself. So as you can see, I'm, I still have the three Bruma torches and the three warm gloves because you can only have three of these and if you would roll on them again, you get um, Torstal seeds and Magic seeds instead. So it's a good idea to keep three of those. I'm also almost at 17 Pyromancer sets right now and 11 Tomes of Fire. I also got about 2.7k burnt pages. The dynamite I'm planning to use once I'm 75 mining which I will mostly get from doing blood rune crafting, so those will sit in the bank until then. Other than these uniques, I've also gotten the pet roll four more times, so in total I've received the phoenix pet five times so far. Then if we go into the herdor tab, this is a pretty nice tab in my opinion. I've already made about 850 prayer potions, 1000 super attacks and 1.4k super strength potions, which will all be used in the future when I start training combat. I still have 780 snapdragons farmed, but these will only be useful once they release the Holcidius rework, which should bring Red Spider X into the game for us, and then we can make super restores with these snapdragons. For the quarms I have in the bank, I need some more limpert roots, but I can't be bothered doing more master farmers right now, so I'm just sitting on those for a while. I'm currently farming Cadentines, which I have 600 of in the bank right now. Because with the Kebbles release coming up next week, I'll be able to farm white berries, which will be used as a secondary to make super defense potions. So this will be a nice herblor boost once I can start farming those berries. Then in this tab, I'm pretty much just collecting some interesting unique items. So I've got all of the random event um, outfits in here. I've also got my Phoenix pet, my fire making cape and a party headset, which I got when they did a drop party at Winter Tot, so I got these on Zea, don't worry. <laughs> also the three big fish I mentioned earlier. This is the bear fur from the first bear I killed as a level 3 in order to do druidic ritual, so this was sort of an accomplishment, which, I, which is why I kept the fur. Um, but I might be dropping this in the future because, you know, I'm not a level 3 anymore, so it's not really that special. Um, there's also the clue hunter garb, which can be uh, received on Zea and the carrots memoirs from the Zea quests. And then in this last step, I'm collecting supply crates from Winter Tot. I'm basically doing this thing where I open crates whenever I have 250 saved up, and then I use up all of the resources from those crates, so that's why I keep them in this step. That's pretty much covered all of the progress I've made on the account so far. My current goals are to continue Winter Tot until 200 mil fire making XP, and also get 99 runecrafting with blood and soul runes. 
Next week we'll see the release of the Kevos Lowlands, so this will facilitate the continuous training of farming and herbal by a lot, as well as give us the new aerial fishing method, which I will definitely go try out on release. Once I'm done with 200 mil fire making, I'll switch over my focus towards combat training, but that's still a few months to go. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can expect another video next week when I will be investigating the Kebbles Lowlands on release, so look forward to that. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys next week.